in Missouri as we kick off a busy day of basketball on the SEC Network. From just around the corner in the columns, this is Mizzou Arena. A little Cotton Bowl hangover for the Missouri fans. And, well, that's all right to be expected. It's a final non-conference game of the season. Central Arkansas in town to take on Mizzou. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside John Sunbold. So far, non-conference results have been a mixed bag, but Missouri hasn't been home in 27 days. The longest stretch since Mike Anderson was a coach. Nice to be back on the home floor in a key game. Three losses in a row, but you're back home. You've had a week off to prepare, not only for this game, but for conference play. I think Missouri will be sharp this afternoon. Well, Sean East has been sharp for them throughout the season. He's a lead guard that can score, but he's also asked to distribute. Well, a guy that can uh, simply do everything, and he's done everything for Missouri this year, especially on the offensive end. He is a tough matchup because he controls how he plays. A little herky, a little jerky. He's got the left hand. His numbers are off the chart. Jump shots, mid-range game, at the basket, at free throws. He's been fabulous so far early this season. Well, it's the kind of game where Sean East can put up a lot of points. Central Arkansas has lost eight of its last ten. Head coach Anthony Boone and the Bears are dealing with numerous injuries, missing two starters in this one for the second consecutive game. And arguably the preseason most important player, Cameron Hunter, is still out with a broken foot. So the Bears, though, played Oklahoma. I know Dari was watching football Thursday, but played the Sooners pretty tough on Thursday night down at Lloyd Noble. You know what, Tom? They are a good team that runs a lot of things offensively. They are both squads will shoot threes. The Bears, 40% of their field goal attempts are three-point lines. So it's going to be a shootout this afternoon. You mentioned depth for this Central Arkansas team. See if Missouri defensively gets after them so that uh, Central Arkansas can't run what they run, want to run in the offensive end. Missouri coming off of a loss in the Bragging Rights game to Illinois. The defense was an issue, allowed 97 points, but scored 73 and a first trip turnover for Mizzou. The Bears lost 88 to 72 on Thursday night, had a long bus ride up to mid Missouri yesterday. Turnover by Central Arkansas. Here's Trent Pierce. Freshman can't finish. Noah Carter picks it up. And Missouri will regroup. Where do you think Missouri's at its best offensively? Well, obviously, when they get steals and they run and they get out in the open court. They have bogged down a little bit in the half court because of the fact they have not scored the ball well in the paint. East off the mark with his first attempt. He's shooting 56% from deep. Yeah, numbers are off the chart. The guy with the basketball, Kirsapu, right now runs this bear offense. They look a little tired, look a little lethargic. The Kirsapu's good off the dribble. They pass, they cut, they shoot threes. Again, as we've seen the first two possessions, the Tigers will jam them chest to chest, not allow the outlet pass, not allow any wing passes, and see if they can turn them over. I'm glad you brought up Kirsapu. This is a guy that. Uh, He's big in assists, averaging nearly five assists a game, but he also turns it over three and a half times a game. Coaching staff has said we sometimes get good with the bad. Yes, yeah. right. But he's been awfully good in some games. Max Beckett wants to play that one. Wow, that's close. It's still happening. Still happening. Oh, great crew courtside here with our special assistant sitting with us for this one. Missouri really struggled shooting the ball in St. Louis against Illinois. Only won three in the first half and for a team that's relying on it, having a hard time knocking them down. Yeah, keep an eye on defensively. The Central Arkansas team at times will look like a zone, but they switch so many things because they've got interchangeable parts. Big time block on the inside by Glory E. Tim. And Carter tries it again, and a blind shot will put him at the line. As mentioned earlier, Missouri's had a hard time scoring around the rim. They missed, obviously, All-American Kobe Bryant, so they can't win. They post it up, guys, whether it's Noah Carter. First possession was Trent Pierce. Not their natural position, either one to post up. They've got a lot of face-up shooters. Picking, popping, shooting has been what they've done most of. Missouri definitely missing the attributes that Caleb Grill brings on the offensive side. He's still out with an injury suffered in the last home game against Wichita State. They, they miss his physicality and his toughness, whether it's on the defensive end, but even offensively. Now, he was not off to a good start shooting the ball. Mm -hmm. But again, his aggressiveness, the way he passes, the way he plays, a veteran player. Another one coming for Carter. He's at 76%. And maybe two free throws gets Noah Carter back on track shooting the basketball. He has struggled mightily last few ball games. Missed three threes. He shot 50% against Illinois, but 
It seemed to be the open ones that he missed that came within the flow of the offense. Yeah, struggled against Seton Hall. I mean, it's just, it's been a bad few ball games for the shots that he normally makes. And Connor guarding Kirsipu forces him to give it up. This is Tucker Anderson. Anderson, a great shooter, elite shooter. Good ball movement and an open three. Off the back of the rim. East finds a rebound. Here's Tamar Bates taking it all the way to the rack in the finish. Seen it all season long. Bates off the bounce, especially in open court. An attack mode with the left hand. Here's Sapu is from Sulu, Estonia. Again, it'll be ball movement, passing, cutting, shooting. If they don't shoot it well, they really struggle because they've got to run back quickly on defense. Trent Pierce finds a loose ball in Missouri in transition still. Here's Honor. Wouldn't be surprised if Central Arkansas has some heavy legs after playing Thursday night against Oklahoma. That was only their second game in 18 days. And they played well against Oklahoma. Here's Pierce. Nice pass. Missouri 0 for 2 from deep. Honor with an offensive rebound. We won't say that much during the season. And a turnover. E Tim, sophomore transfer from Bowling Green. What a pressure about watching Central Arkansas's last couple. Well, I just like how they, they run the offense. It's a pass cut. They face up. They shoot it. This kid can knock it in from anywhere on the court. Again, they are three ball reliant, much like Missouri is. So far, the first part of this game looks like Missouri is trying to get bucket for the rim. Nice cut by East and a finish. Feels like the kind of game Sean East could put up a career high. Well, I mean, it's passing, cutting, and it's, again, heavy legs by the Central Arkansas team. The zoo's going to run. They're going to put pressure on them. And when they get out, they should be able to finish, and East is one of those guys. East can run all day. And a tackle in the open floor. A good defense by Ohio State last night, and Central Arkansas trying to do the same here. Cannot get caught standing around on the offensive end. Passing, cutting, moving. Tiger team very unselfish with the basketball, especially the leaders of this team. East, Honor, Noah Carter. Average it's 13 and a half assists a game, and the nearly 10 point per game increase for Sean East is the largest in the conference. He's jumped from seven to 17. And nobody putting nobody putting numbers up like that. 55% from the field, 56 three point line, 80% free throw shooter. Sometimes a question for a player like that: Can you do more? And, and I've always thought if you're an All-American type or a guy that's going to be an All-Conference type player, you do more in the big games early. Whether it's at Kansas, which he did, you were there. Uh, but at Illinois, maybe he didn't take enough early ones to get his team going. I was talking with Sean about that before the game. And he admitted that that's a delicate balance. It you is. Know, especially with the ball in his hand so often. I thought the biggest games require the best players to start early. Other games, you get the feel of guys playing. Missouri did have a great start in that game in Lawrence, Kansas, early December, but part of a three-game losing streak that included a very disappointing neutral site loss to Seton Hall and KC. And understandable that you'd lose a, a good Illinois team in a neutral site, but I think it was the way that Missouri played. Didn't shoot the ball well and defensively left something to be desired. Well, Illinois lost five in a row. And they, they've been talking about that game since uh, summertime. I've been around a long time. That's kind of what happens. Teams get on a roll, and if you've lost two or three in a row, the guys, the seniors from Illinois had been through this a few times. So we, were, we were there last year when Missouri blew them out. So I think from summer workouts on, they're picked on that game to play well. The turnovers here early on from Central Arkansas. Then a Missouri turnover gives the Bears a chance to push. And another. Bears turtle and a push ahead. Here's Bates, and he fumbled it out of bounds. A little sluggish here early on. Missouri with a five-point lead. As basketball, Missouri going full-court pressure here. East will pick up in 94 feet. Central Arkansas turns it over about 13 times a game. A key part of Missouri's offense last year was what they could do defensively. Bears have turned it over four times, but not against the press yet. One of the things the other night, Central Arkansas, Oklahoma kind of sat back. They didn't get after him till late in that second half, which sped up this Bear team. Carolina Martin, as sorry. you said, not a lot of depth, so they're yeah. going to have to play a lot of minutes of the players you're seeing on the floor. Dennis Gates hasn't gone deep into his bench yet. Carolina Martin is on the floor now, but turnover number five for the Bears. 
He's not afraid to go to the bench early and often. East for three. John East has five of Missouri's early 11. Scores from all levels, doesn't he? And if you get close to him, he puts it on the floor with the bounce. To stay away from him, he's got that semi-set shot that he lights it up. Good backdoor cut. Masai Olokere, senior from Brooklyn, with the bucket. Starter last year. First time in his college career. You tell bodies are tired defensively, the Bears, all the hands are down. I mean, it, it's, you can make cuts. It makes it difficult defensively. It allows any offensive player to see anything they want on the floor. Tucker Anderson, the foul. How about Sean East? Well, here's what he does best. He just surveys to see what he wants. He's got a mismatch, big guy on him. Guy took the step, easy set. Now, here's a backdoor cut. We talked about Kirsten, who's so good with the ball out front. Good with assists, sometimes has a few turnovers, but this is a team that will cut you. Make cuts, kick it out, shoot threes. Missouri plus five on the glass. Anthony Robinson, the second in to help run the point. Move East off the ball. Here's Noah Carter. East recognizes something. One pass got to the zone. East recognizes the zone, calls out hot. They go from their man offense to their zone offense quickly. And, and I would expect the Bears to play a little more zone today because, again, yeah. you're preserving guys. you got to keep all these guys having as little energy as possible on that defensive end. Elias Cato is out. He gives him 11 points in nearly 30 minutes a game. Daniel Sofield, the best off the bench, gives him 25 minutes a game. Another back cut. And a foul on East. And he'll count the bucket. It goes... So Clinton to the free throw line is Connor Vanover checks in for Missouri. East is going to stay on the floor with two personal fouls here. Less than six minutes in. And I like that. Good players can control themselves. They automatically have to say if you got two, come on out. Our team passed up the three, and then the entry pass gets denied. You know, it's interesting about this Central Arkansas team. They're still pushing, they're still running. Wow. Three right on the top of the 7 5 animal. And that's what happens when you try to shoot over a 7 5 yeah. guy. That, that ball was out of the park. You know, back in the day, I came to Norm Stewart's basketball camp. I don't know if you know this, but we had a shooter come in and explain that sometimes you're shooting over Isaiah Thomas, sometimes you're shooting over Akeem Olajuwon, and you've got to change the arc of your shot to accomplish that. Change a little bit of the arc, change a little bit of the, uh, where the elbow goes, right? Some go straight up. The guy any good when he shot? Yeah, hey, he never missed more than one, but he did miss one a couple of times. Uh, need more practice. Earlier, the Entry to Vanover, no finish. Got to be able to catch that, finish it inside. Talented freshman, can't find anywhere to go. Here's Bates, trying to dump it off. So he's looking a little sloppy, shot clock late. Results of Mizzou turnover. Sixth for the Tigers. Three ball on the other side goes, and Central Arkansas now has made it a one-point game. Tom, it's quick. The game's somewhat simple. If you don't score on one end, you got to get back defensive. You turn it over, allows you have to run back and then find men. East inside has it rejected. Going to stay with it, and now the Bates wide open. Got it. Nice rotation. 50% from deep. Yeah, nice rotation. Good catch. Didn't rush anything. Played well in Kansas City. His hometown against Seton Hall. Shot it well. Well, Carey has it knocked out. Eight seconds left on the shot clock for Central Arkansas. 
Shawnee's caught inside last time. They made a good defensive play on him, but he stayed with it. Instead of putting it back up, you swing it out. And Bates has a wide open look, and, and you see the stroke. Reminds some of uh, former great lefty Kareem Rush. Well, he shoots okay. it. Kurt Lewis checks into the game as Bates gets a breather. I think Lewis can be very valuable when SEC play starts. Junior College Player of the Year takes a while to get going, understanding a new system, but he played well against Illinois. Thick, strong, can guard people. Offensively, he's a he's a load because he can take people off the dribble, can shoot it outside. And you feel like that's natural progression this time of year for it a first-year player to find their stride. First semester's done right. He's been through all these games and more minutes. Every ball game, you kind of see the confidence that the coaching staff has in him and himself with his teammates. Floater over Vanover, the tough shot will result in a foul and two coming for Carl Doherty Jr. So Doherty to the free throw line. Product out of Maumel, Arkansas, was an All-State player. In high school that produced Darren McFadden. SEC Network has LSU and Alabama covered out in Pasadena SEC this morning at 8 Eastern Nation at 11. And then the LSU Command Center will bring you the broadcast tomorrow. Oh, probably Monday. That's a full slate. You stay up late watching the uh, Cotton Bowl last night? I did, yeah, sure. Why, why wouldn't I? <laughs> Well, you know what I found interesting in my house, my my wife, Mizzou graduate, daughter, Mizzou graduate, their TV was just a split second ahead of mine where I was watching. <laughs> so it was either disappointment or yelling, right. cheering while I was waiting for the play to happen. You weren't watching with them? Uh, no, I wasn't. Vanover has a size advantage. We say that just about every night. A little baby hook, though. Nice. We haven't seen a lot of that. Put him in the post. Interesting about Vanover. He's only taken six free throws. Five to six from the free throw line. Try to get more contact. That's where he's. You go to the free throw line, 80% free throw shooter, and you're that big. See if you can get there. A nice finish by Doherty. He's got the last four for Central Arkansas. Hanging in. One possession game. You know, Doherty had 23 when they played K State. Wow. Nice. First bucket for the super senior to get it to go after taking a bump on his way in. And he searched out that bump. Tried to get the whistle before the shot. Bears have made five of their last six. After a sloppy start. And both groups, uh, both groups are tight. A lot of grab and a lot of hold. A step on the sideline will take us to a timeout on the floor. Well, teams have heated up offensively. Mizzou's made five of seven, including this baby hook from Bano. And the Tigers getting all they want from Central Arkansas, trying to lean on the upperclassmen here in the first half. It's a four-point Hartster. The team hadn't seen him. He actually had the surgery immediately, missed a game that night at home. And they were uh, busting their way out of town on their way to a game at North Alabama. And so the charter bus rolled through Coach Boone's neighborhood, got to the house, which is up on a hill a little bit. The players got out to walk up the driveway. And his wife said, no, no, he wants to come to you. And very slowly and assuredly made his way from the house down to the bus. And there's some very fragile and emotional young men who hadn't seen their coach in, in that state. Well, we know what coaches mean to most players. It's a father figure. And uh, anytime something serious happens, those players feel it day in, day out. So I'm sure that was an emotional lift for his guys. Seven turnovers early for Missouri. We see a lot of zone defense still by Central Arkansas. Here's Lewis. Off the baseline, out of bounds. Knows how to score. Knows how to use his body, how to get shots. Bump people off to get open to get shots. Great shooter or good enough shooter? Good enough shooter. You have to honor his ability to make shots, and then he's really good off the bounce. Numbers for Central Arkansas for the near turnover. And it went over the top of the backboard, and a team turnover for the Bears. Underneath out of bounds, all coaches work on, can you get a bucket or two during the game? Here's the screen, double screen, wide open, late help by the defender. And uh, nothing's... Nothing feels better as a the guy that they're running it for. Yeah. That's your open when you get it. It probably tells you a little something about what this coaching staff thinks about Kurt Lewis to run a place. Yeah, correct. 
Missouri's made each of its last four. Where do you want to go against the zone? Well, you know what? To get the ball right in the free throw lane here. Aiden Shaw or Vanover. Now, Vanover can see over the top of everybody. So once he catches it, as he did, he can kick it out. Good call by Lewis. But you can kick it out or dump it inside Aiden Shaw. So Vanover's a perfect guy around that free throw line. Central Arkansas shooting 50% from a floor, uh, the floor two games away from one of the worst shooting performances in a while, and that guy can stroke it. That's Tucker Anderson, whose mom played for Pat Summit, went to four Final Fours and won two national championships. Yeah, impressive. And impressive he comes with steal. I've watched again a few of their games, and when Tucker, when he starts shooting it, I mean, he's elite. Bears unable to finish. Robinson was waiting for it. You almost, uh, if you're not rubbing, you're not racing. It's yeah. kind of Nick Honor dribbling up the floor, right? He's going to bounce. He's going to try to get contact from any one of the defenders. Rental car companies probably don't want to insure <laughs> his car. <laughs> Every time you return it, sir, it's scraped up. <laughs> Here's Sapu with the dump off. Nice ball movement. Had a bad sound. Blocked from behind by Robinson. It will stay with Central Arkansas. I think this is a good team for Dennis Gates to play prior to conference. You've really got to guard. You've got to stay committed to your guy. You've got to help weak side. you got cutters. you got weak side help. There's things you got to get to shooters. It's not an easy afternoon if you're on the defensive end for Missouri. Was that part of practice yesterday? It was. It was an intense uh, practice about jamming every cutter they made. Weak side help. And again, a a as I would think, with a limited bench for this Bear team, that Dennis Gates keeps getting fresh bodies in. They want to keep putting pressure on the ball. Not let them run things that they want to run. I think Aiden Shaw got a warning for being over the line on the inbounds. And 6 8 with a nearly 50 inch vertical creating a problem. And Lewis with the rebound. Three on three. Here's Noah Carter. And all the way underneath and use the left. Good old fashioned bully ball, right? Noah yeah. Carter put it on the floor. Did, they didn't stop him, so he didn't stop. Doherty downhill and will draw a foul and go to the line. Something happens on one end, the same thing on the other end. You go till they stop you. Darty smart. Put it on the floor. Mizzou not back defensively. Central Arkansas will get it out of the net and they get it quickly up. And here's Carter. No, there's no stop. So you just put it on the floor, use the rim as an offensive tool. Now you get it out of the net, make, make a running team on offense, run back defensively. Missouri not doing it. No Darty at the free throw line. And a three-point play. Anthony Robinson, freshman from Tallahassee, and Aiden Shaw ran right through Kirsapu and picked up the foul. Got to stay set. Go back to Anthony Robinson. What a, a star. Not only now, but in the future. He's going to be a good one. Boom. If you're moving like that, you're, it's an easy one out front for an official. Sure. Thing working well for Missouri early despite the turnovers. They're plus 11 on the glass that will balance up some of the possessions. Anderson, the freshman. Wow. wow. 33. And he's 6'9. Yeah. So when, when you skip pass and Nick Honor runs at you, it doesn't matter. Lewis open. Missouri 2 of 8 from 3. Was one of 17 from deep in the first half against Illinois. I thought maybe somebody had left one of the doors open <laughs> when I was watching that game, but the Illini didn't have the same issue with 7 of 19. Anderson fouled by honor. Tucker Anderson, a perfect three for three from deep. He'll be at the free throw line when we return. He's a good one. We said he lead. Yeah, watch a skip pass. He's 6'9. It doesn't matter if a smaller guy's running at you. All net played for Pat Summit. Have a very similar experience that you did with Norm Stewart in yeah. terms of a disciplined coach that gets the best out of their players. Well, you uh, appreciate maybe what they get out of you as a player, maybe further down the road, because mm -hmm. it's not easy going through it. But 
You know, his mom was three-time All-SEC player, and obviously the gene pool's very good. So after the final game, Pat Summit walked to the back of the bus, asked Sheila if she had a moment, sat down, and Sheila said she was stressing. What did I do wrong? What's she going to yell at me about now? <laughs> <laughs> she said, you know, your basketball career is over. You should really think about going into coaching. And so she did just that. Central Arkansas has not led this game. They've made it a one-point deficit multiple times. And now an 8 nothing run in a span of less than a minute. Thanks to Tucker Anderson, three, then the free throws. Good minutes by Lewis. A couple buckets as he leaves the ball game. Bates back on the floor. He's got seven for Mizzou. So the Central Arkansas team, after one or two passes, has jumped in new zone. They do switch a lot because they're interchangeable parts as far as height goes. Nice move by Shaw. Shaw has been a little shy on the offensive end lately, not that time. Yeah, reluctant to take uh, open jump shots. But if he can get it down low against smaller people, they would love to see an aggressiveness at attacking the rim. Three points a game in 17 minutes. One of the nation's best shot blockers. Contested shot there. Here's Honor. Behind the screen, off the mark right. Here's the Pooh found. And pretty much his shot likes to go left, likes to take the step left before he shoots it. Here's this guy again. And Anderson left it short for the first time. Good challenge by Noah Carter. It's easy to remember defensively when you're right in front of your bench. Yes. Every coach yelling. Get to it. A direct vocal reminder. East every time. He's got it all. Deep shots, mid shots, floating shots. And the same personal coach growing up in Louisville as Rajon Rondo. Plenty of great basketball players have come out of Louisville, Derby City. Back like it's single digits, haven't noticed that yet in this game. Ooh, Into the ooh. second row. Ooh. Wow. We're going to see a lot of Sean East this afternoon and, uh, and a wide variety. We've seen him hit the three. We've seen him score at the rim. Now the mid-range. That might be the toughest shot in basketball right there from the corner, about seven or eight, ten feet out. Tough one to hit. It's all about angle and perspective. It's a tough one, right? Well, you know what? It, it's... You can't use a glass. Yeah. Like anywhere else around eight, nine feet, you can use a glass at every angle. That one not. So it's got to have the softest of touch. He developed that soft touch playing Papa Shot as a kid. He said I would draw crowds. Everybody would be around, whether at uh, Chuck E. Cheese or main event, whatever it was. I said, that's a lot of quarters. He said, no, no, that's a lot of tickets. <laughs> We've all been there with kids, have we? Getting all those tickets. That's right. Loader on the other end, and that goes for Dart. Boy, Dart has had a solid first half. He's come in as nine points, and he has. Tigers have not stopped him off the bounce. He's kind of done the same thing Sean East has done. Scored in the mid-range game. Yeah, Darty hasn't made a three. All of his makes have been inside the arc, and three misses from deep. Robinson tried to step through, and we get a reach in. Uh, JV on Guy King. Well, it's a different Missouri team than last year, obviously, and Shawnee's taking a step forward from a scoring perspective. But last year, Dennis Gates' team was 4 and 1 in the month of December, just 1 and 3 this season. Schedule cranked up a little bit this season. Uh huh. Right. Outside, okay, you play Illinois and Kansas again, but now you add the Minnesota game, the Pitt game, the Seton Hall game. Changes it. Another terrific shot by East. He's got a team best nine. Anderson leading Central Arkansas with 11. Kick out. And Bates with another three. That's what Jesus does the best. Absolute terrific passer. Oh, 
uh, didn't bother moving the basketball much, but it results in a foul. And when we return, Central Arkansas will be at the free throw line again. Missouri playing unselfish basketball. Another assist. And Missouri's made three from deep with an eight-point lead. Ladies and gentlemen, it'll be fun having not just Oklahoma but Texas in the league. They both join officially in July. One of the things that Castiglione, longtime AD here at Missouri, was yeah. excited about. He said, listen, got to be honest, we're tired of those 11 a.m. starts here in Norman for football. They'll move later in the afternoon, I assume, mostly. So uh, next year, after about 10 or 11 games, let's ask Joe how they're doing. Okay. I mean, I don't know, maybe they're good. Yeah, maybe not. I, I, not, I know a, Texas not an easy is, schedule. I know Texas is coming in full-handed. I'm not so sure about the Super. It's the, uh, we'll pull hard for them. I think they play here at the Mizzou. They do. Uh, open. Tennessee will be their first SEC game. And then the first road game is at Auburn. So it'll be fun to see Josh Heupel go back there. Yeah. And it'll be fun to see the Oklahoma basketball program back in this building. Some great rivalries with Billy Tubbs. They got a good team this year. Porter Moser put uh, together. Got a couple transfers. They're very good this year. That, that Big 12 is always good. Offensive foul, Aiden Shaw got aggressive trying to find position and charge with his second. I, I think the coaching staff is okay with that. I mean, you're, you're never happy with a foul. But one thing everybody's always talked about, Aiden Shaw, they want aggressiveness. They want him to, to be aggressive. And if he's aggressive posting up, you know what? That says something. He's telling Coach Nutt that uh, here's how I did it. Locked him, spun him. Coach Nutt says, you did it right. They, they have them down for four personal fouls. That's I'm not sure that's right. Might be three. Vanover waiting to check in. He's will take it. Dennis Gates has Use his bench liberally um, as he is wont to do coming up under Leonard, Ham Leonard Hamilton of Florida State. They would often play 12 13. Ripped away by Robinson. That's what he does best. Active, aggressive. So good on ball defender. Winning his prep player in Florida high school history. And a nice save on the baseline. Come back from the second row. Martin. And tied up. And a foul on the open floor. Ninth turnover for Central Arkansas led to an easy bucket for Missouri. An excellent steal, and you can tell Kirsapu gets a little frustrated. You know what? You saw the explosion. Anthony Robinson to take it and lay it in. You didn't see that when he was at Allen Fieldhouse. Remember when he took his right. time? Great block. But you learn. Every game's a learning game, especially with that freshman year. So if you're Anthony Bone, you just played a game two nights ago at Oklahoma, the legs might be a little bit heavy and the depth isn't there. How do you manage it over the final 310 of the half? Well, a key thing is defensively, keep doing what you're doing, but offensively, get off the dribble. Seems like every guy in the last four possessions wants to just dribble the heck out of him. And that sets up perfectly for Missouri and how they defend, right? They reach, they knock balls away. So get back to what they were doing. Pass the ball, make a cut, pass the ball, make it. Do things that aren't bounce control that favor the opponent's play. So how can a shooter like Tucker Anderson complement that or impact what you do trying to get off the dribble? It's it, well, he's not the one on the dribble, so it's all about movement. It's about the coaches relaying the information to the point guard or to the other guard to say, hey, get off the bounce, yeah. move it, move it. We've got a guy that's made threes. See if we can find him again. Oh boy, Anderson trying to go for the skill, steal committed his second. In football, you'd say he took the wrong angle. That's Correct. right. Ball was in the air. If he takes a different angle, might have the steal. Good Another play, way. good play by Noah Carter, though. Come back to the ball. Just to clear up some bookkeeping. Aiden Shaw does indeed have four personal fouls. There was the oh, no. Bad info. He's got three, but there was the illegal screen up here, then the last foul down low trying to clear out. So here's Carter at the free throw line. Another slow half of scoring for Noah Carter. 
Last year, big finish for him. Uh, with the final six games, he really found his stroke. He was 0 for 4 from 3 in the Illinois game last time out. I think I misspoke earlier in the game when I said he made a couple of threes in that one. Missouri has made three of its last three from the floor. The free throws have been perfect. Six for six is a squad. Other guards should vacate. If you, if you hang around, you allow a defender to be in the area. He's got a good ball handle. Again, everything's off the dribble. Nobody else touched it in that possession. Missouri basketball. As I go back, if it's man to man defensively, the other guard can clear out. If, if you handle the ball just one on one. If the other guard hangs around, that means the other defender comes. If you bring it up the floor, the wing guy plays too high, his defender can come. If you're constantly bouncing. One pass, man to man, one pass in the zone. Shot clock is at five. There's a trap on the wing. East has nowhere to go. Shot clock is at two. And Robinson lost control in a shot clock violation. That simple defensive shift kept Missouri off balance. It was really good, and then they yelled fire in front of us, and so they double teamed, and East could not get out of it quickly enough. He didn't split it. You can get between the two players and go right between them. Now you've got numbers on the offensive end. Almost like three different defenses in one possession. It really was. But again, they do in their man-to-man, -man, they will switch interchangeable parts up top. So that, but they'll get in their set zone, especially this first half. It has been effective. Vanover just kind of lurks inside the paint and honor. Picks up his second. And Kirsipu's got a little something to him. So there's a little mono -y mono whoever's guarding him. A little bump and grinding, you know, Honor plays in the offensive end. Mm -hmm. Here's who does the same thing. So, Honor's grabbing. Uh, Robinson was grabbing him. It's always good to see. Him. International experience, play for the Estonian national team for six years. A rare miss from the free throw line at 88%. Coaching staff said, you know, he's unpredictable and can be a little bit scary, but. With a year of growth, he's a little bit more calm at the lead guard than he was last year. Robinson around Vanover. Brother played at Central Arkansas, one of his twin brothers. Was a graduate assistant on the staff last year. Now here's what happens if you change defenses a lot. Miscommunication can allow open shots. I think we had three guys in the zone and two on man. They 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 didn't communicate. But honor missed the opening. Doesn't matter if you're wrong as long as all five of you are wrong. Correct, correct, correct. So take a look. Now they start yelling again. Get in the zone and a couple of the. Oh my goodness. Honor doesn't miss many open looks. Over 40 percent three point shooting. What is the value, by the way? In and Dennis Gates is heavily into analytics. Why is the corner three more valuable than any other spot? Well, it's the closest of the it, the closest of the three ball, right? So it's it's an area that is hard to defend because you're usually running out from a from the mid lane or the top. You're yeah. running that one. Uh, Missouri hits over 45 percent of their threes on the open looks in the quarters. The only one that's kind of been shy to take some would would be. Uh, well, Shaw, Shaw. Passed Shaw he passes, especially, you know, he made a few last year. This year, he kind of passes it up. But if you get shooters in those areas, and any team that's running the zone or man, and you penetrate and kick, hard place to get to. Tom Hart alongside John Sunbold. Missouri perfect at the free throw line. Eight for eight in this one. Here's who had it knocked away. Looking at the officials after another physical play. Honor stops from three. And a loose ball will belong to Missouri. Central Arkansas hasn't scored in the last 345. Honor now 0 of 3 beyond the three point line. You good with that look in transition? I think I am because of uh, the, his ability, and he's been around a while. He knows what the coaching staff wants. 
Well, Missouri from deep. This one three for 12. Last week against Illinois, I guess more than last week, eight days ago, one for 17 from three. You know, it's a team that uh, Dennis Gates, he wants to shoot the most threes in the country. So that's what they practice. That's how they want their looks to be. And if you've got one of your best shooters, Nick Honor, even though there's not numbers, but that's how you play. Yeah. That's the way you play. That's what they do every game. You want those numbers to go up. When I watch the Illinois game, it's amazing. Some were missed early by some of their better shooters. They got good looks. Again, Noah Carter has kind of been in a funk. But if you get the looks they want, uh, much like an Alabama team, they rely yeah. on that three ball. I've watched enough Alabama games to think maybe they shoot too many, but that's what they do. And I watched that Arizona game that Bama lost. I thought if they wouldn't take enough, a number of threes, they might have scored each other. But that's what they do. All of it interconnected, but against Illinois, Missouri outshot at the free throw line, 31 to 16. Bates has a dozen now. He's knocked down a couple of threes. And on the other end of that, Illinois, they made those spots. And some were contested. Aaron Shannon ended that game with 30 points for assist, a couple of steals. He's since been suspended from the Illinois program. Their top 15 team. Here's Anderson. First time he's had a look in a while. Good challenge by Noah Carter again defensively. He's four on two for a moment. Honor sometimes gets too deep in that lane at his size. When you get to the lane, you're either going to finish off the bounce on a on a lift, but if you jump stop, and most guys should, but if you do it his size, you can get covered up. Robinson through the foul. That's the third on Tucker Anderson. Been good off the bounce. Lane has been open. Missouri's got good enough talent to get to the lane. Now can you finish? Took the contact. Would have been nice to get his shoulder, the right shoulder, into Anderson and then finish with a little left off the glass. I, I think there are players these days who have learned the value of selling a foul and sometimes they'll sell the foul at the cost of finishing the shot. Could be. And then it looks bad if the whistle's not blown. Mm -hmm. You'd like to get the contact and then in all areas finish the play. Sure. And then you can yell and one. Right. <laughs> you can't yell and one if you don't make it. No. No. Honor hits the bench. Nobody, yell, nobody yells. And two. <laughs> two Where do I get two? <laughs> We're in the bonus. <laughs> Been five minutes since Central Arkansas has scored. Exactly what Missouri wants on defense is one guy dribble. Second on Robinson. Central Arkansas in the double bonus, and that'll put Johannes Kirsten put the free throw line. So right when I said this is what Missouri wants, then all of a sudden Robinson goes up and chests him a little bit. Yeah, Dennis Skate's not happy. Physical brand of defense from Missouri last year resulted in a lot of turnovers, a lot of transition points. That helped with numbers from the points and the paint standpoint. Well, and, and the teaching moments for Dennis Gates. So he's got a veteran group now coming in to honor and East. That's different. But what he's trying to teach a star of the future, Anthony Robinson, is a lot of things. And, and careless gun foul out front. Yeah. So honor and East back on the floor. Go for the final shot. Who will it be on the usually the high pick and roll? East has been the most effective all season long. Here's the matchup zone. Can they effectively get it inside the tallest guy? And he can find some. He's got to turn and face the bucket though. You can see more things. Bates will drive a two and kisses it off the window. Well, some people don't only pass when they get in the left lane. Some finish. Some finish, and it was a good one. Strong with his left hand. Better than those that don't pass in the left lane. Nice. Off the glass. Soft touch. Good first half for Bates. 46-31 our score at the break. Missouri shooting 53% from the floor and 
nearly perfect from the free throw line. You know who's perfect in the studio alongside my buddy Ron Slay. We we'll celebrate the new year with him tomorrow. Here's Darian Oka. Well, that uh, that'll help their stats against a different kind of team. They they have struggled in some of the big ball games with the bigger squads, but uh, they're doing what they're supposed to do. 13 second chance points, 18 points in the lane. I mean, they're doing the things you do against a smaller team when you can pound them inside. You, you know, if you're going to be negative in the rebounding margin, you better find a way to make up those possessions somewhere else. Well, Dennis Gates tells us all the time if, if we don't rebound well, what we have to do is turn people over. Ten turnovers by the spare squad in the first half. Offensive rebound for Central Arkansas. How about that for the glass? And then they give it right back. You know, I remember watching John Beeline's teams at, at Michigan, and they didn't care much about rebounding in the sense that they would play zone. And he said, that's fine. We just can't turn the ball over. We well, miss, miss some possessions via not getting rebounds as long as we have single-digit turnovers. And the other part is rebounding. You just don't want the opponent to have a lot of offensive rebounds. I mean, it, it, there, there's numbers that are out there, but if you're getting pounded on the glass from the offensive end, then, then you're in trouble. Nice look from Bates and Vanover with a high percentage shot. Eight points for Vanover. That one's going the other way. Here's Sapuk thought he got fouled instead of Central Arkansas turnover. Here's Sapuk's got to slow down just a bit. He is at full tilt. And on the offensive end, here's the miss by Carter. Rebound by Bates. We've seen him do it on the scoring end. Terrific bounce pass. Easy finish when you're. 7-5. He uh, couldn't even see Vanover. He just knew that nobody in black was there. And a foul out front. Kirsten frustrated. Uh, frustrated offensively. He's had two turnovers already this first half. Hands on defense. He's got to calm down just a bit because he's got to run that man's offense. Anthony Boone, four seasons, an assistant coach at Grand Canyon. He was at Jackson State. He was at Murray. And then took over after six years as an assistant at Central Arkansas. Shot clock is at five. Bates sees it late. Loves to go either direction, all the way to the rim. Nice. Got it. Loves to go to his right to get that shot with the left hand. So when he starts going left, he's either driving all the way or he'll come back to that shoulder, get the fadeaway, line it right up. They'll double check, make sure the release occurred before the shot clock. I thought it I don't, was it questionable in your mind. No, no, I thought it was clear, but they have a chance to go take a look these days. And Missouri as a team still kind of figure out the rotation and all the pieces. I know we're late in the non-conference. They confirmed came after the shot clock expired. It feels like Tamar Bates, who came in averaging less than nine points a game and now has a Missouri high. In scoring, he could be a dependable scorer in the conference. And the more scores you have, the better you you are. Especially you get to conference play, two games a week, Tuesday, Saturday, or Wednesday, Saturday, and, and competition is hot. Bodies get tired, guys get tired. Especially if you're a jump shooting team, it'll hurt Alabama at times. It'll hurt Missouri at times if you rely on outside shots. But if you have a number of weapons that can do it, like this kid can do it. Here's the poo for three. And the offensive drought continues for Central Arkansas. Finish the half in a five minute drought. Have yet to score in the second half. Bates rolls it home. What a nice play by Nick Honor. Got the ball to the paint, drew every defender. Bates wide open and took his time. Three on the other end goes. Good stroke for Darty. But how about Tamar Bates, who started his college career at Indiana, transfers into Missouri, got his first start this season against Pitt, and he has turned into an offensive weapon for this squad now. Off the feed from Honor, Bates is perfect from the floor, and he's three for three from deep. Missouri, the 19-point lead. It's the same thing. No one thought I'd be here. No one thought, right? Right? Everybody says that. Yeah. Even the best, even Alabama said, well, no one thought we'd be here. Yeah, yeah we did. <laughs> we all predicted the start of the year. Uh, Georgia said that verbatim last year yeah. when yeah. they're second consecutive. 
national But do you title. know any athlete or coach that doesn't say that? No, right? Kobe, Kobe Bryant said, well, they never thought I'd be. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Anderson off the mark with that jumper and a rebound for Central Arkansas over Bates. Bates commits his first personal. Central Arkansas having a hard time scoring the ball. If they get open shots, they're not making. The only guy really playing well is Daughtery. Daughtery, he has played, uh, shot it well, been aggressive defensively. Good Here's pass. Skip to Anderson and good recovery by Bates on that side. Wow. Now Kirsten to in the corner. Got it. Wanted the foul, but what a shot. How about that position? That ball moved, moved, moved. And I thought he was just trying to get contact on the shot. Twine, all twine. Yeah, the, that's how they play in Estonia. My buddy Andy Kennedy used to scout Estonia, so they had great potatoes. I think you like the liquid form versus the. <laughs> Other. That in the jar. Bates off the glass. Still perfect. How does the performance against Central Arkansas, this 3 and 11 on the season, correlate to what's possible in conference for Bates? Well, it, it, it doesn't have any of the relation, to be honest. Each game is separate, each game's different. What you want, what you want from a coaching staff and from players is to get back to the winning way. They lost three in a row. Doesn't matter who you're playing. Get back in the winning way, doing things that you need to do. This team needs to be better defensively, staying in front of the basketball. They've got beat a lot at Illinois and Kansas when they had to stay in front of the ball. Be active with your hands defensively. And then offensively, what kind of weapons can you have? Well, Bates gives them another guy that, if his confidence is high, we know his ability to make shots. Well, he's another guy off the bounce, off the dribble, mid-range to the rim, and we've seen him hit deep threes. Mid-range jumper goes. Nice. A little carry. His uncle, this is Adonis Hasman. Man over, running the floor. The big fella gets the bucket. How about the catch, the pirouette, and the finish. Footwork for the Little Rock product. The Dancing Bear at 7-5, and Vanover will be at the free throw line when we return. It's different, right? Each game is different. You feel different. But any shooter wants to get in any kind of rhythm, right, when you catch and release. I think it's easier in this system for Dennis Gates because most shots are good shots, right? We're going to pass the ball, you're open, you shoot it. Um, and so... If you're a shooter, this is a confident system to play. Oh, that was an aggressive, confident take. Can you be a great shooter without confidence? No. You've got to think you're going to make everything. Now, the, the, there's a difference. So Bates in high school, you're playing all the minutes and taking a lot of shots. You can get any kind of rhythm, even if you're not in rhythm. You go to college and you get odd minutes. I've always said I can take the greatest players and make them non-great by messing up their minutes, mm -hmm. right? Put them in two minutes and they go for one, you sit down. And they go in again, you go for one, you sit down. Now your confidence is great. So what happens when you get to college or the NBA or any league is if, I hate to say you got to practice it, but you sometimes have to practice as you do in the summer. Shoot, 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 shoot. But then you take a seat and go out and take a shot after running. You get one shot. That's all you get, right? And then you sit down. Then you go out and take another shot. Your concentration has to be at a premier level if you want to be at the elite level as a shooter. So that if I only take one or two, my confidence is I'm going to make one or two. If I get 10 to 15 because now I'm a good player, much easier. It's a career high for Bates now at 23. Paint touch in front of Van Over, and it's a block. Missouri, one of the best. Shot blocking teams in the country between Shaw and Vanover. Vanover does a nice job at not necessarily committing himself, and he doesn't have to commit at 7 5. Wait till the offensive player goes up in the air. Got 
Good job by Honor to guard. They'd like to throw it out deep. He took it away. Honor tees it up in transition. And Vanover was there but couldn't finish. Martin feeds Honor. Got it. Uh, Mike Kelly's 62nd birthday. There's your gift, Mike. Thanks for coming down. <laughs> Thanks for making it back. Missouri shooting 59% from the floor. Mid-range isn't there. And East gets the rebound. No luck to Vanover. And over two of 13 from three this season. You know, the bigs for Mizzou have not shot the ball well. Pierce is four for 17 from beyond the three. We haven't seen him much after the start of this game. Butler, three of 13 from deep. They're all good face up shooters. They just have not shot the ball well. And a foul from Carolero Martin. And that'll put a little carry at the free throw line. And Ken. I, I'm sure the answer is yes, you can, but what is the likelihood that as a team you can get those numbers to come up when your schedule gets its toughest? Numbers can always come up. The schedule gets tougher. You've been scouted. Now, here's the best thing for some of the, the guys I just mentioned. Scouting report will say you can't make the yeah. three, right? So if you're four for 17 or three for 15, you're going to get open looks. They're all good shooters. Uh, Dennis Gates, again, allows that those shots to be taken. The key is when you get in the SEC play, everybody is so well scouted. They take away what you want to do well and make you do things you don't want to do well. But the bigs for Missouri can make shots. Now, they have to prove to us over here talking about it, the fans in the stands that they can. Yep, move up on the scouting report. Missouri yep. opens conference play with Georgia here at home on Saturday. And then tough tests on the road at Rupp Arena on Tuesday the 9th against arguably one of the most talented teams in college basketball right now. Have you had Georgia yet? Uh, I had. I had Georgia against Georgia Tech. Much improved from a year ago. Indeed, especially athletically. But I think the league, the bottom teams in the league are better than they were a year ago. Across the board. Mm -hmm. There are three teams with the top 20 offensive efficiencies that are 75 or worse. I think that will come around. Teams like AM and Alabama. Here's what's up for Missouri. What a uh, start so far for South Carolina. Lamont Paris's team. Great non conference. Only one loss that came to Clemson. Michi Johnson, uh, 18 points a ball game. Solid BJ Mack, solid for South Carolina. Not played a hard schedule, so it'll, it'll be a rude awakening. But you've had Kentucky a few times. They are terrific. Tomorrow, Tolu Smith gets to play for Mississippi State. Good to see that he'll be back, and that just elevates what those Bulldogs can do. Doherty with a three. He's got 15. Th that's. Um, a little bit earlier than I expected Tolu Smith to come back. Yeah, I, I thought it would be mid-January the way they were talking. You know, they got a freshman Josh Hubbard who has played well uh -huh. for Mississippi State. Shoots it well. Deep three, which again allows that team to be a better squad. Well, Ole Miss gets Bryant tomorrow. Uh, Ole Miss will try to stay undefeated. Bryant already has a big win on the season. They knocked off Florida Atlantic early in the year, but um, what a job by Chris Beard to instill his coaching style early and it yeah. certainly helped they got some guys eligible that were questionable. Yeah defensively they're much better than offensively guys have just matured. Alan Flanagan comes over from Auburn but again he's been around a long time. He's confident doing what he can do offensively. Uh, Matthew Morrell looks like his confidence is better shooting the basketball. We know how athletic he is. Mid range and to the rim but if he can make threes consistently uh, the, again an easier schedule but they did beat Memphis and yeah. I think Memphis is outstanding so a great win there. Um, that might be maybe the bigger surprise than anybody because nobody knew what Ole Miss would be. I don't think people question Chris Beard no, based on his all. track record. Not at all. Not at all. But it's how quick can a turnaround happen? Because you're doing it with a lot of the same guys you have. Mm -hmm. So now you've got to change all the mentality of, of used to losing to that we don't want to lose at all. He's got deep. He's able to finish. It's just his first bucket of the second half. Tigers have made eight of their last ten. Small lineup now out front with three guards for Missouri. East Honor Robinson. Good defensively. They can be much more active. 
And you've got the activeness of Shaw behind you to protect the rim. Shaw's playing with three personal fouls. Got that settled at halftime and a turnover by Central Arkansas. Their 16th of the game. 23 point lead for Missouri. Aiden Shaw on the floor now for Dennis Gates to. Are you very deliberate with what you run at this point, thinking about guys like Sean Robinson? Nah, I, I don't. I think you just run what you run. I, I, I do think they would like Aiden Shaw to be much more aggressive on the offensive end. Who oh, missed him there? Yeah, and, but. <laughs> he had a wide open dunk. And Noah Carter doesn't miss many on the passes. He missed out. Honor with the step through and able to sell the foul and go to the line. Really, not, I, I don't mean the bad way, but not the strength. Of honor getting to the paint. I mean, he gets there, but it's just hard to finish. I fortunately got a call, but when you get stuck in the paint and you get covered up, it makes it difficult. Honor started his college career at Fordham, and then Clemson for Brad Brownell. We're coming to Missouri last year. He has uh, won everywhere he's been. Good leader. Once you get stopped here, you just get covered up. Now, smart play, stepped underneath. Maybe he uh, got a favorable whistle. Mm -hmm. Ball had already been released. <laughs> Rebounded by Eaton. Anderson. I thought Anderson, if he's got East on him, just back him in a little bit. He's 6'9", and then just shoot over the top. Easier said than done, but you can still get to where you want to get to. Eight seconds on the shot clock. We got our under-12 timeout. Mizzou with a 24-point lead over Central Arkansas. Back to Mizzou Arena after this. You take a look at the preseason poll, and Missouri's down towards the bottom. But there's Ole Miss attempt. Preseason. Polls now, Tom, are so hard because heck, nobody knows the players. You haven't seen half yeah. the players yeah. on these new squads. Mark Sears has good night conference run for Alabama, but they really missed some opportunities to pull up with big non conference wins. Lost at home to Clemson. They had gotten off to an undefeated start. Yeah. And, but here's Bama. You got Sears, Estrada, Nelson. They shoot the heck out of them. Yeah. I mean, they put some points on them. What well, they average? 92 points? I mean, they can go 100 easy. But we've also seen them lay an egg when they go four for 25 for three or something. East for three. He's got 14 now. I'm a little surprised based on the unpredictability with the portal and new rosters, uh, based on what AM had returning. But they've gotten off to a bit of a slow non-conference start. Well, and, and that all has to do with Boots Radford hasn't played as much. He's been hurt. So, as Buzz would say, how, do you, how does Batman and Robin do if Robin's not there? Who's yep. the other Robin? They haven't. And so let's hope that Boots Radford is back healthy. They won't say what the injury is, but he's played. He played. With, he did play against Memphis. They lost, but he wasn't the same Boots Radford. And then I had them a later game that he didn't play. He didn't play against Houston. Uh, but that's a team that was second in the league last year. Everybody, eight of nine players are back, which is rare. Um, we know that Wade Taylor, the fourth, is a preseason SEC player of the year, and he's terrific. So um, they'll be fine okay. as, as long as they're healthy. That, hey, that's Hepner the key. Had 24 for him yesterday in non-conference action. Just guys stepping up with the opportunities available. And they've also played a schedule very difficult, much like Missouri has done. Loading a neutral site loss to Houston. Kelvin Sampson, by the way, here's Sean East. Uh, very moving tribute from Kelvin Sampson uh, after the passing of Brian Miner, the Oklahoma star, two sports star, played for the Orioles as well. Man, that, that dude could shoot it, huh? Yeah, I was uh, in my heyday calling uh, Big 12 basketball where Brian Miner was playing. So. Covered a lot of his games, obviously an outstanding basketball player, won a national championship for Oklahoma 94 baseball team. And then uh, he was the guy that took over for Cal Ripken. How about that? Ripken said that. Amazing. And brother Damon, pretty good as well. Uh, yeah. Calvin told a story. He said, we had an early season film session, and I wasn't really happy with my team. And so one by one, we listed every player's strengths and weaknesses. 
And at the end of it, after some players gave me a hard time about how, what they perceive, perceive their weakness to be, he said, I raced the entire dry erase board, and I wrote one name on there, and it was minor. He said, this is our strength. <laughs> this is it. This is the guy you need to get the ball to. And honestly, that's how Kelvin coaches. Whoa! What a finish by Shaw. Able to hang around long enough for the jam. Good pass, good finish. Go back to Kelvin Sim. That's how he coaches. The best players, the best shooters take the most shots. And he always does. And always says that. Seems like a wise message, East with the push off, right? It makes it easy. And, and you've probably seen some of his interviews on Twitter or whatever that says, you know, if you're not, you're not always good. You need to be coached. Here's a pass by Bates. Bates has done it all this afternoon. Scoring, assists. When you've got a high flyer like Aiden Shaw, you can either put it on the floor, bounce pass, could throw it lob up to the rim, either way. After the East foul, 20 seconds of the shot clock for Central Arkansas. Anderson wanted it back. It would be out of bounds and stay with the Bears. Tom, how, how much we talked about uh, Anderson, Tucker Anderson, in the first half. But after he hit those three threes, Missouri has quickly, every guy's quickly gotten to him so that the, shot aren't, the shots aren't easy. He has not scored in this half. I, I feel like in... Nobody who coaches in the A-Sun wants to hear me say this. But I feel like it's an opportunity for players in the game today when you play up to show coaching staffs what you can do and to show out on film. With the transfer portal being what it is, there's more mobility available. It, it doesn't matter what level you coach. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter if we say, okay, someone might look at the Central Arkansas guys. I've got a brother who coaches D2. If he's got a kid that scores 22, all of a sudden they got new followers from other schools. I mean, it just happens. If you're a great player at Missouri, the NBA's looking, yeah. right? If you're a great player at the next level, it's the way the game is. And I think coaches understand it. You take a kid like Tucker Anderson, he's 6'9". He can flat out shoot him. Now, is he athletic enough for the next place? Some kids will get bad information. They'll think, I can. We've seen transfers that don't quite transfer to the next level. I'm not saying anything about Anderson. I hope he has a great year, does what he wants to do. But we see kids all the time transfer at that next level and not get minutes. And I'll just say as a player, I would have rather played a bunch of minutes at the level I could play. Bates pass. leaking out and finishes again. Eight Shaw with a home run ball. Right on the money. Bates has 23 on eight of eight shooting. So as a player, let's say you're playing against us, higher regarded opponent. Can one game give you a clue as to whether or not I can play, or is it bigger picture than that? I think it's bigger picture. I think they make a mistake if they think it's one game. And other coaching staffs make a mistake. Yeah. When some guys are going after. When the portal, when kids hit the portal, no matter if it's football, basketball, it seems like some teams are just taking it. We'll take oh, him. no doubt. Right? Yeah. Because he, in basketball, he averaged 15, we'll take it. Football, you know, he plays, he's the second string, but he was a four-star, we'll take it. If you don't fit and you're not athletic enough, I think it could just be the worst mistake. I, I would, again, as a player, I'd rather average 22 at Central Arkansas than to play four minutes at the University of Arkansas. Yeah. I mean, no, that's personality. But if you average 22 at Central Arkansas, someone else is looking at some other level. Yeah. If you're going to get paid in France or Charlotte or wherever it is. Carter off the mark with the three. Here's Bates. And his first <laughs> miss. Not that one. Yeah. That's the one you missed. That's the one. Come on. You know, I've talked to plenty of football coaches who have made mistakes in the portal, not from a talent perspective, but from a fit perspective, and not even yeah. from a cultural. Yeah. It's, you know, this guy was rated highly. He's the best rated guy we could get, but we didn't realize that he doesn't fit our offensive system. And is there an understanding of har how hard it is at the next level? Yeah. Whatever level you are, because that's where you... When you came out of high school, that's 90% of the time they're pretty accurate at what level you should play at. Now, one of the misses was Cody Schrader. Yeah. Nobody wanted him out of high school. Goes to Truman State. And then he walks on at Missouri because he kept thinking he could do it. And he did it. Those are rare. Very rare. So Eli on Van Pelt last night, first thing he said was, 
Maybe the senior bull needs to open their eyes and get Cody Trader <laughs> yeah, the, in invite. Amazing. My question: How does that be? The, the last time the guy led the a, a player led the SEC in rushing and was out of eligibility and didn't get an invite to the senior bowl. Shot clock at five. And people will say, "Well, you proved it in the SEC. Why do you need to go play in the senior bowl? It's the week worth of practices in front of the scouts and the NFL decision makers. It certainly gives you those opportunities." Missouri with a comfortable afternoon here at home as they get ready for conference play. Yeah. It's you're the big man, but in the SEC, it's you the guard. The top 14, top 14 scores in this league are all guards. So, says something about what this league's going to be. Good. It's going to be a fast pace. It's going to be up and down. It's going to be a lot of different games of high scoring and guards going at each other. Is there anybody defensively that stylistically will frustrate some of these great offensive teams. A&M has not played great defense this year. You mentioned Boots Radford has been out, and he's a key on both ends. Yeah, so we know Tennessee will because it's Tennessee. Uh, we know A&M does because what they can do is they control the pace by the defense. They, you know, put a 2-2-1 two, two, three-quarter court, make you walk it up. They, they, they slow down the pace, which then would frustrate teams maybe like in Alabama or in Auburn, anybody that wants to pick up the pace. But those are the two. Tennessee's good. Six on the shot clock. And Robinson with the rebound. You'll have Tennessee for the opener, right? No, I have. I'll be here. I have oh. Georgia for the opener. I have Tennessee on Tuesday night. So they've got one more game before uh, conference starts. Tennessee plays Tuesday night. Javen Guy King with the finish. And I think Central Arkansas got a timeout here, or was it Missouri? Hey, can I ask you a question? I haven't paid attention. <laughs> have they been? My name's Tom. Have been? They, have been they running the clock, or did they stop? It, <laughs> it seems like they stopped it. They've got seven minutes over there. Well, at least you don't have to fly, have a flight to catch. <laughs> I got. I got a five-minute drive home. Sorry about. That. I got to find my way to Oxford, Mississippi. Think. Uh, Who do you got tomorrow? Bryant and Ole Miss. Good. Good. You think uh, it'd be fun to ring in the new year with Ron Slay? <laughs> I think it'd be interesting. <laughs> you to, yeah, uh, I, 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 hope sure. you, I hope you dress for the occasion. I need a top hat, but I think we can pull it off. Uh, Oxford will be fun. It always is fun. Good I think the square. What I'm interested in seeing, and I know tomorrow may not be a great example with students not on campus, but I feel like Chris Beard has done a fantastic job of raising the excitement in the building for that program. First thing I thought about when they were playing Memphis was they've already changed the atmosphere. Yeah, right. It's already changed. It's already happened. Much like Dennis Gates did last year here. Get, it, get the energy back. And, when, and Tom, you and I, we go to all these SEC buildings. When they're packed and loud, oh, no, it's fun. What a difference maker, right? Yeah, it is. Same thing, you know what, they're trying to get it done in South Carolina. Lamont Paris has had a good start. When all of a sudden you're getting people in the building, there's excitement. Can you continue it once you get to conference? Wow. It being a flush by Shaw. Assist to Honor. Nice play by Honor getting split in the defense. It's always momentum when you get to conference play. Can you continue it? Can you get a couple early wins against maybe a nationally ranked team? Can you get Kentucky to come into your place and you beat them, right? Then the excitement elevates. I feel like, and here's my prediction, and this is based on what's expected to be balanced, at least for the first, you know, the top two-thirds of the league. I feel like home court advantage is going to play a huge role this season. I think it will, and uh, here's the pass, here's the dunk. The other part is, which which of these teams have the veteran players that can handle this stuff? Now, we know that Kentucky is young. Kentucky's a little different than they've been, though. The last two ball games, 23 of 48 from the three-point line. Yeah. Right? They are shooting the heck out of it. They're athletic. But what? Which team has the leadership, especially the guards out front, that can handle the noise and handle the pressure to get shots for teammates? Or, as I mentioned, the top 14 scorers are guards in this league. Which guard can get a bucket when you need to have a bucket? And as of now, the answer to that question for me would be Tennessee. It's Kai Ziegler. And yeah. If Santiago Vescovi can kind of refine his form and confidence. And they got a kid like Connect who can now all of a sudden spread the floor. Hey, Tennessee, AM, right? Auburn can do it. Alabama, they've got two great guards out front. 
Jordan Butler fighting for the rebound, keeps it in Mizzou's direction. Good hustle by the seven foot freshman. I do believe that uh, Kentucky is a team, and you've seen them. They've got unbelievable upside. Yes. With uh, with that freshman class and their ability to do some things. Tennessee is just solid. I think they've got Tennessee has a couple more scores this year than they've had in the past. Ole Miss has flipped the whole thing around. So I think the league's going to be phenomenal. And, and someone might say there'll be an upset, but they may not be upset. You better protect your home turf and then try to get some wins on the road. It's going to be difficult. So one of the things we've talked about, the common theme throughout the thread, is a lot of these teams will be getting better as players get healthy, get on yeah. the floor for the first time. Uh, Kentucky added a pair of seven-footers late, and Aaron Bradshaw on, and Ugana on Yenso. I, I went to the North Carolina game, which was in my hometown of Atlanta, just as a college basketball fan. And on Yenso is such a great rim protector that he really changes who Kentucky is without slowing them down. Well, what changes is out front how you can defend. How, more, how much more aggressive can you be if you get beat off the dribble and you got help on the backside? Changes the entire game. Easy bucket on the offensive rebound for Glory Eaton. That's his first bucket of the game. And I'm curious with freshmen like Robinson, who I think is going to be a doggone star in this league, who has the ball right now. And you take a freshman like Josh Hubbard, we talked about him in Mississippi State. We know all the other freshmen, you know, we know the guys at Kentucky. But Hubbard comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Shooting the ball well. Now you add Tolu Smith. We talked about Mississippi State. I mean, how they defend. All they've got to do is be able to stretch the floor out by making shots. And they are as good as anybody in the country at, at winning basketball. Games. What do you see about Anthony Robinson that shows you what that upside could be? Well, the first thing is defensively. He's long, he's got a long reach, he's got quick feet. And he understands how to play. Offensively, he's he can handle it, he can shoot it. Uh, he plays like many freshmen play now. You know, he doesn't try to take over any part of the game. He kind of makes a simple pass. Like that one that leads up the floor to a bucket, right? He doesn't have to do everything. When I watched practice yesterday, what I observed was not only is maybe he the most talented guard on the court, but he listens to not only his coach, but to a guy like Nick Honor, who's been around a while, a guy like Sean East. And when you watch practice, you, you try to pick up those things. Are they listening? Are they trying to get better? And yeah. He's one of those guys. Coach's son, his dad was assistant baseball coach of Florida A&M, and now high school athletic director at University High in Tallahassee. We play. 6'10", Pierce will get a breather after getting some run. And what's always interesting is guys at the next level are already calling about Mr. Robinson. When they were at the Illinois Missouri game, I talked to a couple scouts on the phone and they said, I said, who are you there watching? They said, uh, well, the number 14 for Mizzou. I said, really? Already. So they don't usually waste their time. No, do they? they don't. They really don't. Mid range in and out. Carter the rebound. Honor up to Lewis. Numbers. Here's Shaw. Nice. Physicality, being aggressive, attacking. Aiden Shaw's got a quiet personality. Great kid. Dennis Gates makes Aiden Shaw when he comes through the black curtains every practice. He's got to yell. Anything in particular? No, just, just, just let loud, it go. just loud, just yell. You, he wants a, a, a different Aiden Shaw on a basketball court than he is off the court. Maybe he was one of those guys roaming the hallway in my hotel last night, just yelling for no reason. Part of 24 bench points for Missouri, 11 Tigers have scored. Runner over there, they're turning that thing on. I hope you can catch your foot. <laughs> well, I-70 was if you leave now, Midwest buddy. version of the Audubon, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is, yeah. As long as those cards in the left lane are passing over. <laughs> That's right. Carter down the lane. Oh! No! Oh! I'd have to stop for some oh! walnut balls on my way. Carter gets it to go. <laughs> ah. A smile on his face. It's been a tough few ball games for Noah Carter on the offensive end. Still plays hard. Passes, cuts. Outside shots not been going. Good save, good move. Spin of the ball. What is the learning curve 
for a roster in this day and age with so much churn. And uh, I ask that question not from a coach's perspective in terms of the five that play the best together, but from a player's perspective, learning where you fit and who you play well with. So I think it's different today, Tom, in the fact that kids are used, they play AAU ball, right? Yep. And they play at different high schools, and then they go to college and play with different, they play with different groups of guys. Now, what has changed is many old-time coaches, a Norm Stewart, a Dean Smith, even a Roy Williams, they ran more system, right? We, we would spend, when I was at Missouri for Norm Stewart, we might spend a week on just entry passes from point guard to wing, right? Just, but it was so oh, wow, the finish. Not like that system. Wow. Fantastic look from Honor, who's got four assists in this one. Oh, my. Tigers have five and double figures. You know, you reward big guys that run the floor and just throw that alley-oop pass just right of the rim and anywhere above it. Just to the right side and anywhere below the top of the square. H. Shaw is going to get it. I have in my notes that H. Shaw has a 49-inch vertical and he is 6'8". Jackson Francois on the floor for Missouri for the first time. Saw his mom and dad at the game earlier. They seem to be here often. They had quite a night last night. His mom, the athletic director here at the University of Missouri. Down at the Cotton Bowl. What, what a night, night for Missouri oh, Athletics, huh? Yeah. Lewis with the reverse. It's one thing to win a game like the Cotton Bowl to close the season and finish in the top ten. I think it's another thing to take down a, a program with such national respect like Ohio State. Yeah, eight national championships for Ohio State. And, and, and a powerhouse. But the fourth quarter was owned by Mizzou. Yep. And I drink was talked about their fourth quarter toughness. He brought a slingshot with him to uh, the Van Pelt show. 90 seconds left in this one. So now what do we nickname him David? <laughs> well, that was kind of point. He said, I had somebody tell me that if you're going to be at Missouri, you're going to need a slingshot to beat the glass every now and then. And now Missouri might become a Goliath. Here's Robinson. And a foul inside and 112 to play. Second game this season with 90 points or more for Missouri. And they are on their way to their largest margin of victory previously 22 against Arkansas Pine Bluff. And now they have a week to prepare for conference play. So they got a lot of practice time after their last ball game against Illinois. And now you've got a full week to prepare for Georgia that comes in here much improved. Mike White we know is a great coach. His team will guard you. They'll take high quality shots. Mike was a college teammate of Anthony Boone. Playing for Rob Evans. From the corner, the three is off the mark from Tucker Bowman. How does to kind of put a bow on this game as Missouri goes into conference play against Georgia? How does the not conference impact how you think about Missouri's chances for success in the league? Because if they're going to be an at-large NCAA team, they got a lot of work to do in conference. They got a lot of work to do. They, they were prepared by the schedule they had. Uh, the big win at Pittsburgh, the big win at Minnesota, the comeback wins. Now, they've had big losses, too. But I think there won't be any surprises for them when they uh, enter SEC play as far as the level of talent they'll play against. Yes. They, they know what they've got to work on and get better at. Road games at Minnesota, Pitt, and Kansas. And then a couple of neutral site games. And both Kansas City and St. Louis. A 92 point afternoon, Missouri shooting 54% in the game. And a high percentage of their points coming from two. There's a three from Darty. He's got 23 to lead Central Arkansas. There's no difference. We're going to turn the shot clock off. And the Tigers can run out the clock on this one. Go to eight and five on the season. Central Arkansas. After a two-game win streak a couple of games ago, a few games ago, we lose their third in a row. 
And dropped a three and twelve on the year. Well, partner, that was fun. It always is. Thanks to Mac Beckett for his assistance today. Appreciate that. Happy New Year to you and the fans. Happy New Year, Tom. Welcome back home for yes, at least for a day. Great to be back, Missouri, with the 92-59 victory, the first of a loaded schedule on the SEC Network today. For more on that, we'll get you back to the studio. For John Sunbull, Mac Beckett, and our fantastic crew here, I'm Tom Hart. Here's Dari Noka.